going on, team? Keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, shout out to everybody, man. YouTube, team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, my apologies. My apologies because um, there have been quite a few people asking about this story, asking how everything went down, asking how it all happened. And I had been saying that I had been meaning to, to drop the video where I talked about it. But I had just been procrastinating, procrastinating. And of course, a lot of other NFL news came up and whatnot. Y'all already know. But I've been neglecting this. So my apologies. So thank you for everybody that reminded me um, about, hey, what, what, how'd you meet Bashar Perryman? Like, what went down with that? Um, so, I mean, let's just get into it. Now, just a quick recap. Y'all already know who Brashad Perryman is. Is a former Ravens first round draft. Well, not even a former Ravens first round draft pick. Because he will, he will always have been a Ravens first round draft pick. He's just a former Ravens now. Um, he played wide receiver for them. Uh, his career didn't start off so hot. Because in, in his first year, uh, his rookie year, he got injured. Um, but then Harbaugh, who has... Mm, for the most part, learned his lesson. He still has some hiccups here and there. But Harbaugh was running his mouth too much. He thought he was part of a medical staff. And he said, Bashar Perryman, he's week to week. He is week to week. So, um, he would say that every single week. And everybody, we were all wondering and waiting, oh man, what's going to happen with Bashar Perryman? Is this going to be the week that he comes out? Is this going to be the week? Is this going to be the week? So, Harbaugh would just keep saying that. He's week to week, week to week, week to week. So, that set an expectation in the minds of us as fans, like, okay, well, he'll be back soon. Harbaugh says week to week, but he'll be back soon. Okay, cool. We'll be waiting for him. So then uh, we were playing the Bengals. It was a Ravens versus Bengals game in Bashar Perryman's rookie year. And they said Bashar Perryman, he was on the field doing workouts. He was running. And they said, oh, okay, okay, he's, he's getting closer. If he's on the field pregame, he's getting closer. He might not play this game, but he's getting closer. And then, boom, it broke. Bashar Perryman, he took a nasty fall, landed the wrong way, had a setback, out for the year. So then, a lot of people, oh, he's a bust, oh, he sucks, oh, he's this, oh, he's that. Like, okay, um, let's hold out hope. So then, he missed that season. Next season rolls around, and Bashar Perryman, he comes on strong. The very first play of the game, I believe, he caught like a 38-yard, a 41-yard catch on Stephon Gilmore. And Stephon Gilmore was all over him. He was draped all over him. So he showed some flashes, man. He showed some flashes that year. And we were like, okay, well, that's the guy who we were waiting on. But then, next year rolled around. Got pushed down a depth chart. Had an injury, but he still made it to the season. And then, um... Just the opportunities changed a lot. The opportunity changed a lot. Um, and it just, things started to sort of go downhill. Of course, uh, he was super close with, uh, with Trey Walker, um, who was the Ravens cornerback, a, a fourth, fourth or fifth round pick. Um, and we know what happened with Trey Walker, unfortunately. So I know that, that messed Rashad Perryman up. Um, his father, even at one time, had been on life support. So uh, that that would mess anybody up because uh, that's that's like that's that's so much happening to somebody. That's a lot to go through, and and like I said in other videos too, um, especially with the Trey Walker, even with the, with his father too. Um, he him going to work. He obviously doesn't have the average job since he was an NFL player, but him going to work, he would get daily reminders of both of those things because his father used to be an NFL player. Where does Brashad Perryman work? NFL. His teammate was Trey Walker. Where did Brashad Perryman go to every day? The team. So he had to get daily reminders of stuff that he had went through. And I remember that I was reading something that where Brashad said, um, he said that he was in a dark place. He said he was in a really dark place. And I remember actually, um, I know because his DMs were open back then. I don't know if they still are now, but I had sent him a message back then. I sent him a message back then. I do not remember exactly what it said, but I sent him a DM back then. Um, and I was just, it, it was a supportive DM. I forgot exactly what it said, but I said that I'm, I was rooting for him. That I knew he was going to bounce back. Because I really was rooting for him. And as y'all know, y'all know I root for Bashar Perryman heavy. Y'all already know that. 
Um, I was upset with the Redskins when they cut him. Um, and, I mean, I, I, I was just glad. I'm glad how everything worked out, though. I am very glad that he ended up being on the Browns. I'm super glad that he ended up being on the Browns because, in, in, and even in that last game of the season against the Ravens, I'm, I'm so glad that he got to show, he got to show um, the Ravens this is what y'all lost. This is it right here. And it's just another example of the Ravens' poor development of wide receivers. But again, we've talked about that so many times, and we're going to continue to talk about it too. Uh, but just not in this video. But either way, um, his, his uh, career with the Ravens, it was rocky. It was up and down um, throughout the end of it. It was, it was more down than up. But at the very end of it, it uh, he, there was a lot of up. There was a lot of up. But then that one down against the Redskins in the preseason, um, that was such a big down. And at that point, that's when I knew his career with the Ravens was over. Um, so that happened. And then he visited with the Bills, the Jets, the Giants, the Vikings, I think the Eagles, um, of course, the Redskins. And there might have been, been somebody else, too. But either way. He signed with the Redskins. Redskins cut him like not even a week later. So then along came the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns end up signing him. And I was like, okay, I like the move. I love the move, actually. Because he had a quarterback that had fire. He had a quarterback that would get him the ball. He had a quarterback that would throw him the ball. He had a quarterback that could put confidence in somebody. And I love and he had a quarterback that don't that just doesn't care what people say. He does not care. He got that. He got an attitude, and I, I, I love Baker Mayfield's attitude. I know a lot of people don't like it. They like, oh, well, Baker Mayfield. He blah, blah, blah. I love his attitude. Love it. Love his swagger. Love his confidence. Love it. And it's because it's scary. It's scary. If you you got a quarterback that will walk into your stadium like he did in Baltimore, came in there. Yeah, he threw what two interceptions, but he ended up throwing like three touchdowns. I think. And he, he didn't let them two interceptions derail him. He didn't care. He, he, was, he was still throwing that ball. Still throwing the ball. And making a lot of plays happen. Boy. Um, so Baker Mayfield, again, like, like I said, man, he's going to be special. I thought he should have been rookie of the year. I can understand why they gave it to Saquon Barkley, but I thought Baker Mayfield should have had it. Just because of his impact that he had on the team. But anyway, um, they paired Bashar Perryman up with Baker Mayfield, and they actually gave Bashar Perryman opportunities. They gave him opportunities and he was doing his thing. So y'all know me again. I'm a big supporter of Bashar Perryman. I was I was upset when he got cut from the Ravens, but I did understand why. And I, I expected them to move on from him. They had been this past season, they were like uh they were like in and out on him. Because they did give him his roster bonus of like six hundred fifty thousand dollars. They gave him that. So that was like a good sign, like, okay, they're gonna give him a chance. So then they gave him some opportunities in preseason. He had one drop. And that drop resulted in an interception to the Bears. Uh, but then he dropped nothing else after that. He did not have any drops. Then he went to the Browns, did not have any drops. None. Zero. And he was making plays for them. So, and it, it's been said that they've actually been working on a, a two-year contract with him, too. They've been working on a deal with Bershaw Perryman to re-sign him. So I hope that happens. I really do. Um... But anyway, uh, with everything that was going on, um, when I saw that Brashad Perryman was, was really going to stick with the Browns, I made a video on it, on why Brashad Perryman would stick with, with the Browns. And I said that you don't just give out press conferences to people who just are not going to make the team. You don't do that. Teams don't do that. And they gave Brashad Perryman his own press conference. And I was like, oh, and I listened to him, and it just sounded like he was just ready. It sounded like he was a little timid, um, maybe a little nervous with all the cameras and stuff. But he was answering questions and he was actually smiling. And I had not seen this dude smile in Baltimore in a long time. Which is, I can understand why. I mean, not many receivers in Baltimore smile, period. But especially with everything that Brashad Perryman had went through, um, yeah, he didn't really have much reason to smile. But he made it to Cleveland and this was his new home and he stuck. He stuck and he, what I think is going to make him that much more dangerous next year is the fact that this dude came into he came into with the Browns midseason. He didn't even have a full season with the Browns. He came in there midseason. And he did work. So imagine now he's with Baker Mayfield. They got an offseason together. They got training camp together. They got all that all the offseason schedule together. 
So that can make him that much more dangerous with Baker Mayfield. Oh boy. Baker Brown's gonna be nice, man. Brown, I was just talking about it with some people on Twitter today. Some people agree, some people disagree. I said, these, these Browns, these ain't the same Browns that we've been dealing with, man. These are not the same Browns. But anyway, um, I have been, of course, y'all know that I made plenty of videos on Brashad Perryman. And there were some people that were like, oh, you're even, why are you making so many videos on Brashad Perryman? You gotta stop. Stop it. Stop it. He's not on the Ravens anymore. Give it up. I told him no. No. So I just, I, I love, one of my favorite things is when people try to tell you how to run your YouTube channel. I love it. It's the best. It is the best. But anyway, um, with that being said, Bashad uh, Perryman, he was doing his thing with the Browns, and I got, it's funny just how the timing of everything worked out, because me, with, with Team Keep It Clean, I, I was like, man, I, I, got a, I got my YouTube, I got my Instagram, my Snapchat, my uh, Twitter, make sure y'all follow on all of those, of course they, they down below, um, and I, I got all that going, but I said, I never made a Facebook, I did not make a Facebook yet. So I decided, I said, you know what, let me make my Facebook page, because I haven't made one. So I went, made a Facebook page for Team Keep It Clean. And, of course, make sure y'all leave a like on that too. But then it was about mm, maybe a week after I made the Facebook page, I got a message. I got a message from there. On some, and I'm not going to say exactly who it was or their name, but I got a message there from somebody who said they were Bashar Perryman's family. They were one of his family members. And I was like, uh, I don't know, man. But they, was, they said they were one of Bashar Perryman's family members, and they said that they had seen the videos and whatnot, and they appreciated the support um, that I was giving to Bashar Perryman, and they, they, um, they relayed the message to him, too, and he said that he appreciates it. And they, 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 they thanked me for it. And I was like, okay. I said, I said no problem. I'm definitely rooting for them. But when I saw the, uh, when I got the message, it was one of those Facebook profiles that they didn't have a picture. It was just that default, that grayed out box. So I was like, mm, that's kind of, kind of suspicious. So I think maybe somebody might be trolling me. But it's, it is what it is. So then... Um, the, the, the family member, they were like, hey, well, I, I want to set it up to where, um, I want you to be able to meet Bashar. I want you to be, be able to meet him. And I was like, okay, cool. That's fine. Um, and I told them that I'm, I'm in Miami. So the Browns, they, they didn't play the Dolphins this year, I don't believe. But either way, um, Browns weren't down here, but I mean, they should. Uh, the family member did say that Rashad, sometimes he's down in Miami. So maybe we could link up that way. But I was like, okay, cool. Um, but I was like, uh, I don't know. This, uh, this might be a little funny, but I was like, ah, oh, whatever. So that happened, and then uh, then I didn't, I didn't hear from him for a while. No, you know what? Before that, before that they asked, because um, they, they knew that I was a, I'm, I'm a Ravens fan. Um, they said for the uh, Week 17 game, when the Ravens were playing the Browns, because um, they asked me if I lived up in Baltimore, I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in Miami, but I said I might be up there for that game. And they were like, oh, yeah, 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 let, let us know if you're going to come up. Let us know if you're going to come up. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, cool, I, I'll do that. So I thought about it, and, I was, and, and they, actually, um, they actually offered to give me a ticket, too. A ticket to the game, not the airport ticket, but a ticket to the game. And I was like, ooh. I was like, well, well this would be cool um, to get a ticket to the game from his people. I don't even know who this is. I don't even know if this is his people or not. So I was like, you know what? Um, I'm a, I'm a, uh, while I want to accept, I don't want to fly up there for nothing. And then come to find out I get okie doped. Because I'm like, oh, that, that'll be, that would really be something. To be outside of the stadium and be hoping that you're going to get a ticket to the game. But then all of a sudden, boom, nothing. And then you just, you got to go home. Ooh, that would, that would be pretty upsetting. That would be pretty upsetting. Uh, especially to come from Florida to Maryland. Um, either way. But so I was like, um, 
I, I was I was debating on going up there now. Then I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. So what I did, I, I got myself the uh, the plane ticket to go up there for that game. But, but, um, I, I decided to go my own route for the seats. So the same seats that y'all see in every vlog where we go to the Ravens game, those were the seats that I ended up uh, deciding to get. So, and those are my family seats too. Like I said, they got season tickets. Um, so... That was the game that I, because I, I, I was like, I don't, I just don't want to take that risk because I don't know who this is. And then what, what was funny too, or actually kind of scary, not even funny, is that the, uh, the family member was like, oh yeah, we can get you tickets or whatnot uh, to, the, to the Browns game. We can get you a ticket to the Browns game. And then I didn't hear from the family member for weeks. I didn't hear from the family member for about two, two, two and a half weeks. And I, I had sent them a message, didn't get a response. And sent and uh, I had uh, and and I saw that the message was left on red and I was like oh man, so they read it and but they didn't respond to me I'm like oh man here we go, I'm getting okie doked, and this was maybe like a week and a half before the Browns game or something I'm like oh yeah I'm, I'm getting okie doked so but I was like I was like it's cool it is what it is I'm glad I didn't invest too much energy into it I did get a little excited at first but I'm like you know what that yeah I was probably just getting trolled anyway it's all good it happens that's life. So then, um, I did get a message back. I actually got a message back, and I was like, oh, wow. And they, they told me, they, they were like, hey, uh, do you still need the ticket? And at first I said, yeah. But then I was like, um, I asked for multiple tickets. And they said they couldn't do multiple tickets, they could just do one. And I was like, uh, no. That's, I said, no, that's, that's, that's fine. Um... Because my boy JB Smooth and my boy Dev, who y'all saw in the vlog, um, they were going to be coming to the game with me too. So, getting the tickets through uh, my family, that, that ended up working out perfectly. So, just in case I got okie doped, I was safe. And just in case said, yeah, just in case I got okie doped, I was still safe and I would be able to get into the game because I wouldn't want to show up and then it'd be nothing. So then, um, I told them. Told the family member that I would be up there for the game. And the family member was like, okay, cool. Uh, we'll try to work out something where you can meet Rashad. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever, cool. We'll see. So the day that I flew up there, the day I flew up there um, to Baltimore, got there. Um, oh, actually, while I was on the plane, the family member had messaged me and said, hey, are, are you in Baltimore yet? Or are you in the DMV? I said, no, not yet. I'm on a plane. And that week, I flew JetBlue. Oh, JetBlue is the best. Whew. Spirit is oh, just so bad. So I flew up there JetBlue. JetBlue was a great flight, as usual. Um, the TVs make a big difference in the fact that they actually give you snacks. And Spirit, they don't give you anything. Not even the internet. But anyway. Um, but yes, uh, the family member had sent me a message while I was on the flight. And I was like, yeah, I, I haven't landed yet. But then as soon as I... Uh, Oh, they were like, oh, uh, call me when you get here. And I'm like, oh, they, they, they told me to call me, but they didn't give me that number. So I asked them, I said, what's the phone number? And didn't get anything back. About an hour passed, still didn't get anything back. And I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to just send my number. I'm going to just send my number. If there's somebody trolling me, whatever, worst case scenario, I just changed my phone number. It's not a big deal. That'll be that. So I sent my phone number, and I was like, hey, you can call me when you get a chance. And that was it. So I landed at like 9 in the morning and didn't hear anything. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've been all over. I went to go see the Raven Stadium because I always do that the day, before I, the day before the game or the day that I come. I always go by, drive by the Raven Stadium. Um, and I hadn't heard anything. Hadn't heard anything. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, okay. I guess that's that. Um, so then, at about, I think about maybe 8, 8.30, o'clock, I had got a call from a number, it, it, it was either, was it a Baltimore number or a D.C. or Maryland number, whatever, whatever it was. I had got a, a, a phone number, a, a, phone, a phone number on the call ID from a local area code. And I said, hmm, well, could this be them? So I picked up, and they were like, hey. This is Brashad Perryman's family member. And I was like, oh, okay. 
And then I was like, oh, well, maybe this thing is real. They sounded genuine. They sounded sincere. And I was like, okay, wow. And they were like, hey, once, once we get details of everything, we'll let you know. And then we'll hit you up then. And they were like, hey, this is my number. Got any questions, anything? Call me, let me know when you get to the stadium. I said, all right, cool. So I was like, oh, wait, wait a minute. This, this might actually happen. This might actually happen. So then, um, the next day, we were texting back and forth. Now it was some consistent communication. We were texting back and forth because um, they were like, yeah, let me know when you get to the stadium. We should be getting there around this time. And I was like, okay, cool, because that game had got flexed. It used to be a 1 o'clock game, but it got flexed to a 425 game. But either way, they said, they said when they were going to get to the stadium, and I was like, okay, I'll be here around then. Um, but nothing, nothing ended up happening. So then... Um, they would text me during the game, uh, and they were like, let's, let's meet up at halftime. So you can know what I look, cause, cause after, after the game, we gotta get on up out of here so we can meet Bashar. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, so they, um, they were like, hey, uh, they, they said, let's meet up at this section during halftime. And I'm like, oh man, I'm supposed to meet with Team Keep It Clean, but I'm like, okay, well, they'll, they'll understand. But I did see some people from Team Keep It Clean during halftime, so that was good. Um, but I didn't get to see everybody, which uh, I was uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, maybe next time. So I met with them at the at the at the section of the stadium that they were sitting in, and super nice, super 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 nice, super nice, super nice, like super nice, super sweet family, super nice family, super supportive family, like. I honestly, like, not even exaggerating, I almost felt like it was my family. But any, any, either way, um, so talk, talk to the family member, um, met up, and they were like, hey, okay, well, this, this, now I know what you look like, uh, you know what I look like, so after the game, we're going to meet here, then we got to head out. I said, all right, cool. And they, they were like, actually, we should uh, leave, leave the game a little bit early um, so we can head out. And I was thinking, uh, I can't leave the game early. I didn't say that, but I was like, I, I can't do that. I can't miss this. Especially how that game ended. There was no way I was leaving that game early. No way. Um, so then, uh, after the, the game winning interception, shout out to CJ Mosley. Um, uh, the game was over. We were celebrating. I was crying. Shout out to Dev and JB Smooth. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um... Got to meet my boy DS Khan. I mean Discon. Yeah, Discon. Discon. That's his name. I know he, he got on me at the game for messing up his name whenever he asks a question from subscriber. I got to meet my boy John Moore. Um, I got to meet my boy. Uh, is it family? Oh, what's it's something family? Oh, what's his name? I can't think of his YouTube name right now. Um, but what what's what's so funny is that um. The subscriber that I met, his and his his name is something family. I forgot what his what his full YouTube name is. While me and Bashar Perryman's people were walking toward Bashar Perryman after the game, or toward where he was gonna be at, toward the the, the, the Browns bus area, to where he was gonna be at, um, I had ran into him, and he was like, "Oh, Engraven, what's up, man?" I was like, "Hey, what's going on, man?" And he told me his, his YouTube name, he said he appreciate the videos, and, and he, he actually, um, that's him in the video, in the clip that I put in the, in the intro, where he says, um, he says engraving in the house, uh, but he, oh, I forgot what his YouTube name is, but anyway, what's funny is that I, I, met, I met him while I was walking with Bashar Perryman's people, uh, on the way to, to meet up with Bashar Perryman, and then, once we actually got to where Bashar Perryman was gonna be at, he was there too. And I was like, huh? I said, hey, well, what's up, man? He said, hey, what's up? And he was just chill. Like, I'm like, cause I was thinking, like, what, what's he doing here? And he was actually, um, he was actually uh, Brashad Payman's girlfriend's dad. And I was like, wow, that is crazy. A subscriber. Somebody that's been showing love on the videos is actually Bashar Payman's girlfriend's dad. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. 
That's crazy. You just, it was very uh, super humbling. He was super nice. Super, super nice. Like, the whole family was super, super nice. Only, only one thing. <laughs> only one thing. And I, I can't blame her because she didn't know. Um, because when, it was actually super funny. Because when, um, <laughs> when me and my boy JB and Dev, when we were walking with Bashar Perryman's people toward, um, toward the, uh, the area where the Browns players were going to be at, we had to walk through the stadium. Of course, there's tons of people at the stadium because everybody came to that game. Um, we was walking through the stadium and whatnot, so people going one way, we going a different way. Um, we we had to go into this little oh, I forgot what 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 entrance or exit it is, but we had to go under this like sort of like a VIP rope. It wasn't like a VIP thing, but we, we had to go under this rope, and the the security was there, and they were letting Bashar Perryman's people through the rope, and the person that I met up with halftime that that had to make sure she, she they knew what I looked like. They were like, okay, hey, that's a uh, he, he's with me. And I was like, cool. So then, um, I was following them. We were, we were following them because, again, it's me and my boy JB Smooth and Dev. So we were going, we were going with them. And when we got to the part where we had to go under that little VIP rope, um, the security guard what, asked Bashar Perryman's girlfriend, who I, I didn't even know that was his girlfriend at the time, but she was walking with the family. Um, so I knew, I knew it was his people. But the security guard had asked Michelle Perryman's girlfriend, like, hey, are, are they with y'all? And his girlfriend was like, no. And I was like, oh, man, she, she about to get us kicked out. She about to get us kicked out. I was like, oh, no. And I was like, yes, we all with them. And she was like, no, no, they're not. And I was like, oh, man. I said, yeah, we're, we're with them right there. So the security ended up letting us through. And I was like, oh, whew. I, I really thought she was going get to us, get us kicked out. But again, she, she didn't know that we were with um, the same people that she was with. Uh, so I was like, phew. But I did get to, to meet her afterwards, and she was super nice. Like I said, everybody that I met, all of Bashar people, they were all super nice. Everybody was super nice. Um, and they, they were great, man. They were great. And again, and, and they even commended um, the person that I... The person that I uh, the person that set up this whole thing, they even commended that uh, about the team keep it clean thing. And they were, they were talking to some of their family members and whatnot, and, and they were like, oh yeah, he, he doesn't do any cursing in his videos or anything like that, so anybody can watch it. And I was like, wow, I, I, that, that like, um, it really, really made me feel really good, man. It made me feel really, really, really good. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. It was a super cool experience. Um, it was a super cool, um, it was crazy, it was crazy. I don't know why I'm getting emotional, like, talking about it right now. But, um, it was, it was really cool, and that was all before we even met Bashar Perryman. But the family, um, that, like I said, I felt like it was my family. That family had, like, such a, uh, such a great impact on me. Because they were super nice. They were super nice, super humble. Um, I was talking, I was talking to, uh, one of them about, uh, about my uncle's, his conch, because he likes cooking everything, um, conch salad, uh, and they, they were just great, man, we were talking about whatever, we, I mean, we, we didn't really talk about football, because I mean, I mean, the, the game was over, we were just talking about whatever, man, and it was super cool, it was super, super cool, then, uh, Bashar came over, and Bashad, he was super cool. Um, we did a little video, and he was like, "Oh, he was like his team keep it clean." And he was laughing and stuff. And I was like, "Yeah, it's, I said, that's what it is, man. His team keep it clean, man." And uh, yeah, he did. Y'all, I mean, y'all saw the video in the intro and whatnot. Um, he was he was he was super like laid back. He wasn't like one of those cocky stars or anything like that. Like, nah, he he was just super chill, man. He was super chill. He seemed like a super chill dude. Um, and that was that, man. It, and it was just, it was really cool. It was really fun. And just not only meeting him, but meeting the family, um, it, it was really nice. So, again, whatever you do, um, just know that you, you never know who's watching. And you never know whose life you're touching. And you never know who will touch your life, too. Like I said, this I appreciated this so much. Um, it was 
it was just crazy how everything worked out. Cause like I said earlier in the video, I had just but before the family member sent me the message, I had just made my Team Keep It Clean Facebook page like maybe a week before. I had just made it. Cause I was thinking like, man, I I really got and it's funny because they messaged me on Facebook. They could they, they could have emailed me, could have found a way to, to Twitter or Instagram or something like that or Snapchat and but they they messaged me on Facebook. So, maybe, had I not created the Facebook page, then maybe none of this would have ever happen. Maybe none of this would have ever happened. So, anyway, shout out to all of y'all. Shout out to Bashar Perryman and all his people. Got a lot of love for y'all. And I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. And, again, sorry to y'all that I took so long to, to bring this story out, to talk about this story. Um, but I, I hope it was worth the wait. I'm out.